so in part two we uh, we are going to cover monopoly power sources of monopoly power and the social cost of monopoly power so <clears throat> Uh, how uh, the firms create uh, monopoly powers or how they can increase the monopoly power. So monopoly power, production, price and monopoly power. So firm A is not a pure monopolist. It does have a monopoly power. It can profitably change a price greater than the marginal cost. Of course, its monopoly power is less than it would be if it had driven away the competition and monopolized the market, but it might still be substantial. This raised two questions. The first one is how can we measure the monopoly power? Because if it is a pure monopoly, then it is 100% with that firm. But if it is not a pure monopoly, then, then every firm has its own monopoly power. Uh, monopoly power. So what are those uh, <coughs> sources? So first we measure a monopoly power in order to compare one firm with another. So far we have been talking about the monopoly power in a qualitative way now we want to see in a quantitative way that how we can measure it and what is the formula available that we can compute uh, the uh, monopoly power uh, the second thing what we want to discuss here is the sources of monopoly power how the firms get the monopoly power and why do some have some more monopoly power than others we address both these questions below uh, but we're going to discuss in detail in chapter 12 and 13, uh, where we're going to talk about the game theory and uh, different models uh, like a Steckelberg model or a, uh, other models in order to discuss uh, these uh, measuring of these. So uh, here we are just uh, looking at a one uh, model or a one index that we can use to measure the monopoly power. Remember the important distinction between a perfectly competitive firm and a firm with a monopoly power. For a competitive firm, price equals marginal cost. For the firm with the monopoly power, price exceeds the marginal cost. And how much is that exceed that measures their power? So learner index of a monopoly power. So learner index was developed in order to measure the monopoly power. And how they measure the monopoly power? Measure of a monopoly power calculated as an exceed of a price over the marginal cost as a fraction of a price. So what we did, price minus sorry so price minus marginal cost divided by price so that's a mathematical uh, notation for uh, learner uh, index of monopoly power now we can further play with that learner this is the simplest form uh, but we can change it a little bit uh, by saying that uh, the index of monopoly power can be expressed in terms of elasticity of demand facing the demand. So that is a very simple formula for calculating the monopoly power. Minus 1 over elasticity of demand. So the rule of thumb for calculating the price is MC over 1 plus 1 over elasticity of demand. So the elasticity of demand and price markup, uh, the markup is P minus MC over P is equal to minus the inverse of the elasticity of demand. So if the if the firm's elast uh, is elastic as in figure one, the markup is small. You see this one, small and the firm has a little monopoly power. But on the other hand, if Opposite is true if the demand is relatively inelastic, like in this curves, and you see that the impact of price because of a monopoly power, they are charging high price. So elasticity of demand is determining the monopoly power. Uh, markup pricing, supermarket to designer jeans. So we see this uh, example with reference to this monopoly power. Although the elasticity of a market demand for food is small, definitely is a food, it's an essential item, no single supermarket can raise its price very much without losing customers to other stores. The elasticity of demand for any one supermarket is often as large as minus 10. So we can find P is equal to MC over 1 minus 0 0.1, which is, which is MC divided by point nine or 1.11 mc 
So the manager of a typical supermarket set prices above 11% above the marginal cost. Prices about 11%. On the other hand, small convenience stores where the uh, typically charge high prices because his customers are generally less price sensitive and because the elasticity of demand for a convenience store is about minus five so the markup uh, equation implies that its price should be about 25 percent higher than the marginal cost right uh, <clears throat> with the designer jeans the demand elasticity is in the range of minus two to uh, minus three uh, are typical so this means that the price should be 5200 percent higher than the marginal cost now what are the sources of monopoly uh, power uh, <clears throat> the less elastic its demand curve the more monopoly power a firm has so one thing is elasticity the ultimate determinant of monopoly power is therefore the firm's elasticity of demand Three factors determines in firms elasticity of demand, the elasticity of market demand because the firm's own demand will be at least uh, as elastic as market demand. So the elasticity of market demand limits the potential for monopoly power. The second thing is the number of firms in the market. If there are many firms, it is unlikely that they, a, anyone will be able to uh, affect price significantly. Uh, number three is the interaction of these interactions among these firms like those who are operating so even if only two or three firms are in the market each will be unable to profitably raise price be every very much uh, if the rivalry among them is aggressive with each firms trying to capture as much of the market as it can so capturing the market can be a reason of a severe competition even the firms are very limited in number on the other hand, the, there is a possibility that the firms are large in number, but they collude with each other and behave like a, a monopolist. So sources of uh, monopoly, as we discussed, that the main source of uh, monopoly power is the elasticity of demand. So if there is only a one firm, a pure monopolist, its demand curve is the market demand curve. In this case, the firm's deck. Uh, degree of monopoly power depends completely on the elasticity of a market demand. When several firms compete with one another, the elasticity of a market demand sets a lower limit on the magnitude of elasticity of a demand for each product. A particular firm's elasticity depends on how the firms compete with one another and the elasticity of a <coughs> sorry magnitude of the elasticity of a demand for each firm. So a particular firm's elasticity depends on how the firms compete with one another and the elasticity of market demand limits the potential monopoly power of the firm or individual producer. Because the demand for oil is fairly inelastic, like gas, we all have to use a gas to run our cars, at least in the short run. So OPEC could raise oil prices far above marginal production cost during the 1970s and early 1980s because the demand for such commodities as a coffee, coca, uh, tin and copper are much more elastic attempt by producers to cut up, uh, ca cartelize these markets and pr raise prices have roughly uh, largely failed. Uh, so in each case, the elasticity of a market demand limit the potential money power of an individual producer. The second, as we mentioned, the number of firms, other things being equal, the monopoly power of each firm will fall as the number of firms increases. When only a few firms account for most of the sales in the market, we say that the market is highly concentrated and the, the firms, those are who are operating, has a monopoly power. Uh, how we can control the number of the firms are barrier to entry. So conditions that impede entry by new firms, sometimes there are neutral, uh, natural barriers to entry. Uh, like we can say uh, the, <clears throat> the, the firms required of a minimum uh, to reach up to the minimum uh, average total cost is very high they, that they have to produce in in large numbers so that they can reach up to the their capacity of a minimum average total cost uh, like utilities we see we see hydro or uh, 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 the gas companies or uh, these companies those who are using network to provide the supplies so in that case the uh, 
the average total cost minimum level is achieved at a very large quantity so there is no possibility of a two firms can exist it's a wastage of resources and all this the second way that how we can create uh, barriers is a uh, is a artificial way it's a natural what we discussed before artificial ways in this way uh, artificially we can uh, give the monopoly power to a single firm as a patent copyright and licenses so these are the ways that uh, we use to uh, create a monopoly Econ economies of scale may make it uh, too costly for more than a firm to supply the entire markets so or in some cases economies of scale may be so large that it is most efficient for a single firm a natural monopoly the, to supply the entire market the the third point we we discuss that that creates a sources of monopoly power is the interaction among the firms so firms might comp compete aggressively undercutting one another's price to capture more market share or they might not compete much so they might even collude in violation of the antitrust law agreed to limit output and price prices now other things being equal monopoly power is smaller when firms compete aggressively is larger when they cooperate because monopoly prices are concerned rather than individual uh, is a more likely to be profitable uh, collision can generate uh, substantial monopoly power so remember that a firm's monopoly power often change over time as it operates condition uh, operating conditions like uh, market demand and cost its behavior and the behavior of its competitors change monopoly power must therefore be part of a thought of a dynamic context it's changing it's not constant all the time so furthermore real or a potential monopoly power is the short run can make an industry more competitive in the long run large short run profits can induce new firms to enter in the industry and thereby reducing monopoly power over the long now what is the social cost of a monopoly power dead weight loss is creating we discussed many times before what is dead weight loss <coughs> it's a reduction in the uh, total uh, welfare or total consumer uh, and plus producer surplus or a total surplus of the economy and we see here that monopolist uh, is producing up till this point charging this much price so what is happening this much is an increase in the producer surplus and that is also reduction in the consumer surplus but what is the impact is that the consumer is losing more this triangle b and the producer is also losing this c triangle c so this the triangle b and c is a dead weight loss uh, the b is the uh, lost in the consumer uh, the consumer is losing a plus b uh, but a is recovered through producer uh, so we say that b and c is the consumer uh, producer's loss uh, producer is gaining a but uh, at the same time they are losing c so the dead weight loss is b plus c uh, rent seeking spending money in socially unproductive effort uh, to acquire maintain or exercise monopoly power that is a way that uh, people uh, seek rent we would expect the economic incentive to incur rent seeking costs to bear a direct relation to the gains from monopoly power now there's if there is a price regulation in case of a monopoly so we see here uh, the monopolist without government intervention is deciding this much quantity and by this way charging this much price so if left alone a monopolist is producing qm quantity and charging a price P pm when the government impose a price restriction ceiling of p1 the firm's average and the minor revenue are constant with equal to p1 and the output level is q1 right so if they set the price no this is the price they have to charge for a large output level the original uh, original average and minor revenue curves apply the new marginal revenue curve is therefore the dark purple line which intersects the marginal cost curve at q1 and by this way the q1 is produced and q1 is produced and make a uh, <coughs> less profit or uh, other than the situation in our monopoly 
uh, price regulation so when the price is regulated to pc at the point where the marginal cost intersect the average revenue output increase to maximum qc this is the output that would be produced by a competitive industry so lowering price further to p3 redu reduces output to q1 q3 and causes a shortage now as we discuss the natural monopolies natural monopolies are monopolies among the uh, firms where the uh, efficient uh, minimum uh, scale or uh, <clears throat> where the average total cost is minimum is achieved at a very large size so firms that can produce the entire output of the market at the lowest at the cost lower than what it would be if they were several firms so regulating the price of a natural monopoly uh, a firm in a natural monopoly because it has a uh, economies of scale declining average and uh, minimal cost over its entire output range so if the price were regulated to pc the firm would lose money and go out of the business so setting the price at pr yield the largest possible outcome consistent with the firms remaining in business except profit now how we can uh, uh, regulate the social cost of uh, uh, monopoly uh, one thing is regulation in practice the regulation of monopoly is sometimes based on the rate of return uh, that it earns on its capital like if someone spends uh, invested 10 million uh, 10 million or a 10 billion dollar to construct a uh, thing that is creating a monopoly uh, <clears throat> and they said that okay uh, I want a 10% return on it. So their profit, their price is going to be set so that the, the investor can get it 10%. The reg, and so the regulatory agency determines as an allowed price so that this rate of return is in some sense competitive or a fair. Rate of return regulation, uh, maximum price allowed by a regulatory agency is based on the expected rate of return uh, that a firm will earn. Although it is a key element in determining the firm's rate of return, a firm's capital stock is difficult to value so a regulatory lag uh, because the regulators are deciding about certain event or when the prices are changing uh, so there's a lag time so that's what we call it as a regulatory lag a regulatory lag a, a, is a term associated with delaying changing regulatory price so another approach to regulating in setting price uh, cap based on the firm's variable cost so the price cap can allow uh, allow for more flexibility. For example, a firm could raise its price each year uh, without having to get approval from the regulatory agency by an amount equal to the actual rate of inflation minus expected growth rate. So this is our part three. Uh, the last few portion is more theoretical and explaining the logic uh, for regulation of the uh, monopolies. So this is our second part. Uh, now please uh, stay with us uh, in order to cover the whole chapter and the last portion of the chapter is covered in part 3. Thank you.